Now we turn to someone running a major presidential campaign with decades of experience as an aide to politicians in both parties. He's in charge of one of the biggest budgets in politics right now, Michael Bloomberg campaign manager, Kevin Sheiky. Kevin, how you doing? All right, thanks for having me. Uh, great to have you. I should mention you also served as deputy mayor uh, in the Bloomberg administration. Uh, let's get into it. There are reports your campaign already has people talking to Joe Biden's backers to try to recruit them if he gets out. Uh, what are you telling them? Well, we're talking to everyone. I mean, I think the uh, idea behind this campaign is that you can run, run a national primary campaign, and not only can you run one, but we have to run one. We are up against an incredibly formidable president who is doing everything he can to win this election. And unless we start campaigns in battleground states now and states all over the country, we're going to lose. And so Mike Bloomberg made a commitment to run a national primary, but at the same time run essentially a general election strategy so that we could begin campaigns in places like North Carolina, Michigan, and Wisconsin, but where the president was fighting for three years. Are you years. telling the Biden folks you're the, you're the natural uh, alternative to him? Uh, I have enormous respect for the former vice president. I think he's one of the most decent public servants um, this nation has ever had. Uh, I would never say a negative thing about him, nor would this campaign. Uh, that said, we have, since 1976, a pretty clear track record that you have to win either Iowa or win New Hampshire. And if you don't win one of those two states, you don't go on to be the nominee. I think that's true of folks who have competed in the early primary process. You're saying Biden's but, toast if he doesn't win next week. I'm saying that anyone that hasn't won at least one of those states is toast after next week. That's yep. correct. And it's, historically, that's been true. Um, let's get into Mayor Bloomberg's policies. We know a lot about him from, as mentioned, the administration that you served in for a, a period of time. Uh, one of the ones that's gotten the most attention, of course, is stop and frisk, which was ruled to be racial profiling. Uh, for folks outside of New York who, who don't remember, we'll show you some of the, the statistics here. The vast majority of these people stopped uh, were minorities, black or Latino, 87 percent. That's part of why courts struck down parts of it. Uh, why was it important to Mayor Bloomberg to run this policy as mayor? Mike came into mayor in New York City in 2002, as you know, uh, shortly after 9-11. And there were still 800 murders in New York City. Most of uh, the people that were murdered in the streets of New York were young men of color. And Mike was determined to do something about it. So getting guns off the street, reducing murders in half, which he did, was an important part of that. That said, Mike also, unlike so any other view, mayor in this country. Be, let, we'll deal with that and then go forward. You yeah, view, sure. and your campaign's position, is that the, the, that racial profile and the stop and frisk policing lowered the murder rate? That's your contention? What, Mike, what my contention is that Mike was going to do everything that he could, and that was an important part of the policy. What Mike later said uh, is that well, he got it wrong. Slow down. And that it, let's, no, 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 we'll get no, to no, that. No, we'll get to what no, he later said, but I'm asking no, no, you why answer, for 12 I'm years. Answering. That right, was I'm the answering policy. Your so I'm, I'm asking you, your, did it... I'm answering is, your question. Did it lower and the murder rate is, the, is my question. What Mike Bloomberg did in terms of 12, 13, 14 different policies that he put in place reduced murder in New York City by half while he was mayor. He also reduced the population of the prisons in New York City by half while every other city's went up. He broke the rule that you had to increase the population of the prisons to reduce the crime rate. Mike Bloomberg turned, proved that incorrect through a number of innovative strategies that people all over the country practice today. So it, it reduced, sounds like, you're saying, it sounds like you're saying it was one of the policies that drove the murder rate down. He's willing to turn his, his back on what was happening in New York City to okay. people of color. So let's, you talk about people of color. Do you know how many stops there were under that policy? Hundreds of thousands. Is that what you think, or do you... Any higher than that? I, I don't have them. Number? I don't. I don't have them in front of me. I also know that Mike ended them before he left. Well, let's let's get into it. I have the number in front of me. Good. Five good. and good. Five million stops, as mentioned. Vast majority, black and brown people. And I want to take a listen to how the mayor, when he had the power. I understand that you mentioned that yeah. maybe he's Keep changing going. as as a candidate, and we could talk about that. But when he had this power, take a listen to how he explained how necessary that policy, those five million stops of black and brown New Yorkers, was. Take a look. They just keep saying, oh, it's a disproportionate percentage of a particular ethnic group. That may be, but it's not a disproportionate percentage of those who witnesses and victims describe as committing the murder. In that case, incidentally, I think we disproportionately stop whites too much and minorities too little. Is that still uh, his position? No, Mike said he got it wrong. Um, and you could keep asking the question. I'll till, keep telling you. He said he got it wrong. What he didn't get wrong is that he was one of the few public officials in this country who actually cared to do something about it. He might have been the only public official in the country who took on the NRA in the way that he did. 
He was the only mayor at the time, while the prison population was going up 6%, over his early years reduced it by 36%. Well, what I'm He's trying to understand, only you said I keep asking the question, and, yeah. and I'm not sure what you mean by that. This is not a question that's going to go away, not on this program, but not in a lot of programs, yeah. because this is the record of how he governed. And so the question is not just those five million stops, but it's whether this is how he will govern again if he gets power or whether we are supposed to, we in America, society, journalists, et cetera, are supposed to take his word now that he got it wrong, that he'll do I, I it differently should... next time. Let me play something else for you that I think is important. Sure. I think this, con I hope you agree, this conversation, this topic is important. Yeah, no, no, I'd like to talk at some point, but I think it's an important conversation. You're, gonna, you're getting a lot of time, but you're also getting some facts. You said, for example, hundreds of thousands of stops, it's five million. So you get to talk, but then I also So introduce... you were talking, obviously, putting years together, and I was talking by sure. the year, but do whatever so that... math you want, Ari. Well, I'm doing the math according to the data in right. New York. So let me play for you, and this I think is, is very important. Taekwon Brihan, uh, a Brooklyn resident you may have heard of, um, who spoke to the New York Times about his experience under this Bloomberg policy. Uh, not that he was stopped once or twice or 10 times or 20 times, but 60 times um, while he says he did nothing wrong. Take a look. I was so confused in the first time it happened. I thought you had to do something for them to really stop you. But after that, I seen that you didn't have to do nothing to get stopped. They never say, this is why I'm stopping you. When you're young and you're black, no matter how you look, you fit the description. From the time I was 15 to 18, I would say I was stopped, questioned, and frisked for at least 60 to 70 times. I needed a break from cops, and the only way I could get that was to stay home. What, what does Mayor Bloomberg say to him and, and, again, the people affected by these millions of stops? Listen, I think Mike would say he was wrong. I would say Mike got it wrong. And uh, listen, I think there are people in life who get things wrong. I don't know about you. I've gotten a lot of things wrong in life. And it's important. It's important to talk about it. What's really important, though, is, is not to turn your back on people who are looking at important issues and trying to address them. Lots of politicians around the same period of time were more than willing to turn their eye on the number of guns that were on the streets of major cities around this country and the violence that occurred. Right. Mike did take on the issue of trying to get guns off the street. He also took on the issue of guns trying to flow into the street. He also took on the issue of discrimination in employment. I sat with a number of young people today who benefited from a program Mike started called the Young Men's Initiative. It was the first municipal program of its time to address discrimination in issues such as housing, such as employment, and worked to keep people from going back to prison. It was 12 people who would participate in a program that Mike Bloomberg created, which was ultimately adopted by Barack Obama and became My Brother's Keeper and was taken nationally. And so Mike did hundreds of things because he recognized that a lot of mayors around the country, and certainly the federal government at the time, had turned its back on young men of color in terms of economic opportunity and all the other discrimination right, that people I, place, I, particularly I think, and most importantly, violence. Right, and I think right? those are, these so, are important policing so debates. Think, when you I talk about young people of, of this, color, part of what we're showing you is what young people of color and as represented by organizations, as you know, why it was so controversial, why they sued. And so the, the question overhanging all this, and I want to give you a chance to address yeah. it, that's why we're going in depth on it, is did it change because he's running for president and now he's claiming he'll do something else if he gets power when he had power? He, he ran it this way and defended it throughout and defended it, as you know, recently before he ran, even after leaving office. And that goes to something else that I think broadening to a wider topic that I'd love to get your, your views on, which is what is the message to Democratic primary voters who are concerned about the rise of Donald Trump's Republican Party when you have someone who was a Republican mayor? Uh, and take a look, for example, at the past conventions when he was running and advocating and endorsing Republicans for president. How does that message change? Take a look. Neither America nor President Bush ever stopped believing in us. Mayor Bloomberg, Governor Pataki, all of you that work so hard in bringing this convention to New York. Our party has chosen a man to lead us who embodies the best this country has to offer. And that man is John Kerry. Thank you to the Republicans for your tremendous vote of confidence in our city. Obviously, he has every right to support whoever he wants. I'm curious, looking forward, what's the message uh, to grassroots Democrats about that history? Well, let's point out that Mike Bloomberg also stood on the stage in Philadelphia and gave a very important speech for Hillary Clinton and endorsed Barack Obama twice. But let's go back to what 9-11 was. New York City bid for two conventions in a period, one of its worst periods in the history of New York City. We bid for the Democratic Convention. We bid for the Republican Convention. New York City was a city on its knees. 
It's a city that needed great help from the federal government to come back from the greatest attack on American soil. Uh, and the federal government did answer that question when Mike was mayor in 2002 and put together a $20 billion package to let this city get off its knees and to come back stronger and better than it ever was before. Mike Bloomberg was mayor of New York. You know, Mayor, uh, mayor LaGuardia once said, there's no Democratic or Republican way to pick up the trash. The question is, how do you address the needs of your citizens? How yeah. do you move the city well, forward? That's, that's and I think Mike has always done that. Is your I argument, think, you, let me just be in fairness, you're, you're yeah, emphasizing uh, that he fought against Trump, that he backed Obama. You're emphasizing that history. So is part of your message about 04, because you know, I mean, you know politics well, uh, this is going to come up. Is part of your message at 04 that that was a make good that he did for New York, not for Bush? My, hey, listen, my argument in terms of Mike's 12 years in, in, uh, in office as mayor of city of New York is he was the greatest mayor New York City ever had. He worked with Democrats, he worked with Republicans, and he brought New York City back from its lowest point in its, you know, 200-year history. Uh, it was a remarkable recovery, and yeah, it, it took working with everyone, Democrats and Republicans in Albany, which is our state capital, and Democrats and Republicans in D.C. Um, I think, quite frankly, as you look forward... Uh, Mike Bloomberg is running for the Democratic nomination for president. At the end of the day, it's going to take a lot to pull this country back together, yeah. just as it took New York City after 9-11. And I think that's why Mike's running nationally, because his view is we have to pull a lot of folks together. Certainly, we have to pull the party together. Uh, Mike Bloomberg has been a Democrat, obviously, for the majority of, of his life. But we have to pull independents well, uh, and maybe even some Republicans who don't support this president now. Let me give you one more question that I bet you won't answer, sure, Kevin, go but I got to throw I'll it at you. I'll answer all your questions, Ari. <laughs> Here it is. You, as mentioned, you have one of the biggest war chests in politics. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg has said that part of his ad spending and being out around the country will help blunt Donald Trump either way. And we're hearing a lot of Democrats discussing your campaign, even though you're not running next week in New Hampshire. Is there a scenario where Mike Bloomberg ever gets out of this race before the convention or given his budget, uh, he could run clear all the way through? Yeah, no question. Listen, we're clearly running uh, to be the party's nominee. Our view is you need the largest and most diverse coalition uh, to actually beat this president. That He's far, far more dangerous and formidable than people think. Uh, but uh, we have signed leases uh, in the offices that we've opened around the country in the six battleground states right through November with the hmm. idea that if Mike is, the, is not the nominee, that those offices and our work and all of the canvassers are down there who've been hired will work for the nominee. We haven't signed the other leases uh, over those same period of time. We've only signed in the battleground states, which is ultimately the places that we'll need to beat this president yeah. come well, November. Yeah, well, look, it's, it's really interesting. It's a very different approach to the campaign. Of course, he had a different approach to business, and you're running potentially here to be the nominee against someone who had a very different approach, too. So all of it really interesting. And, Kevin, I really appreciate you taking all the questions, sir. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.